Ja, war. Aloy, do you have a moment? Show me your smile. You, you flew? Cortalo told me. And took out Regala's machines? You know what? I don't even know why I'm surprised. I saw we have visitors and a new weapon. Does this mean we're ready to take the fight to the Zeniths? Almost. Oh, and I wanted to give you this for helping me get the data on Leviathan. I didn't really know what to give you, so I asked Zoe what you might like. Thanks, Alva. I'll put it to good use. You sure you're okay going on this mission? I know things must be happening pretty fast for you. Uh, I've already braved oceans and madmen who thought they were ancestors reborn. Why not a few immortals with lethal drones at their command, too? <laughs> Guess the more the merrier. Are you okay? I was wondering, is it really safe having someone like Regala here? She seems angry. The kind of angry that leads to murdering people in their sleep. Don't worry. We're going to point that anger in the right direction. The Zeniths. If you say so. Is she here here? She's not in the base, right? She's back at Memorial Grove somewhere. Yeah. I trust Regala more than I trust Silence and Tilda. Just like how Silence says she's easy to manipulate. She's a lot simpler. I hope our new guests have been behaving. This Silence, he's the one who built the weapon that can take down Zenith shields? He is. Though I wouldn't expect him to answer any questions about it. He refuses to dole out his secrets to us lesser mortals. Oh. You know that special part of us that makes us warm, kind, welcoming? Our... spirit? Yeah. He was born without that. What a shame. I suppose you saw that Tilda is here. Our very own Zenith. I almost went up to her to ask her, well, every question I've ever had about the legacy. Every diviner I know would kill to get five minutes with one of the old ones. But now that she's here, all I feel is a vague unease. I right? don't know if I'm scared of finding out more uncomfortable truths or just scared of her. Probably both. She doesn't give off that aura of wanting to save people. Have you looked through the data we recovered on Leviathan? There is much to sort through still, but I believe we'll be able to get it operational and turn back the floods. And I've given more thought to everything we've uncovered about the Ancestors. The Overseers would have us believe they were infallible paragons. But Pharaoh wasn't. Not even close. His greed led to machines that devoured the world. The archive of the Old One's knowledge destroyed, just to erase his mistakes. So, when we learned that Eileen had a hand in covering up hundreds of deaths, I started to think they were all the same. Selfish, egotistical, cruel. But, in the end, it's not that simple. The truth isn't a straight line of ink on a crisp scroll. It's a splatter, smudged, and faded on stained parchment. I wish more Quen could see that, instead of looking the other way, or twisting the truth to serve their own schemes. I doubt Bohai would agree with you. No, nor the rest of the Board of Overseers. As Eileen said, it's easier to believe the lie is truth, but it's worth fighting for. And this Diviner, at least, won't settle for anything less. For that, I thank you, Aloy. If we can come back from this journey with everybody unscathed, I get the impression that most people will just go back to their own tribe. But Alva, what about you? I really do feel like you don't fit in. With a Quen. But you have family back on the mainland. So I guess you can't just stop being a Quen and all that. Just living in that system, knowing that people aren't willing to change. I don't think she'd be happy, but again, her family is on the mainland. I need to wrap up a few things, but stay sharp. I'll be ready when you call. Thank you. You're the only one healing my soul in this base now. Everybody else is too sad or just not nice to talk to. 
There's Gwen stuff in here now. Must be all of us. Quen stuff. Which one is the Quen stuff? I have no clue. Yeah, that's the stuff. Good hello. Oh, the arm. I see you've got your new arm ready to go. Yes. It still feels strange. I've gotten used to the absence, but no matter. I'm sure I will need it before the attack on the Zenith base is through. Mm, yeah, please keep practicing. Weaponized prosthetic arm. Blends old world the technology. The old ones were powerful indeed. But much about war remains the same. With tenac tenacity. I haven't seen you since the battle at the Grove. How are you holding up? I saw you fly on the wings of the Ten, and paralyze Regala's army with lightning. I would say that I am... <sighs> inspired. Thank you, I guess. It is I who should be thanking you. Things will get ugly once the Zenus realize we're in their base. You'll need every trick you've ever learned. I would have it no other way. Many soldiers died in the old world to make sure we stood here today. We will endure on their behalf. Though, I am curious how you intend to defeat the Zenith's defenses without an army of our own. Leave that to me. Just make sure you're ready to fight. As you say. You have more than earned my trust. Silence has the one weapon, but how big of a hole can you make in the shield? How does the shield work? If you make a hole, does the whole thing go down? Oh, we just don't know the specifics. But Silence... I might not like him, but his work should be reliable enough. Look, I know you're probably not happy about keeping Regala around, but I want her on our side when we fight the Zeniths. It is more than she deserves. Even so... I will not question your judgment. Thank you, Katalo. Everyone around me has said it's a bad idea. Not a single person has said it's a good idea. Anything new going on I should know about? The Quen has been more insistent than usual, asking about the visions at the Grove. Her pursuit of knowledge is relentless. The Ten would have a hard time fighting her <laughs> off. Just think of her like one of your chaplains. Yes, only more persistent. He just wants to know. Did Aaron tell you we found the people who gave Regala's rebels the power to override machines? He told me of the battle. I suggested he etch this victory on his fighting arm with one of our inkers. Is he going to do it? He didn't say no. Hmm. That could be cool. Some interculture exchange. Did you meet Tilda? There is something about her that doesn't seem natural. <laughs> yeah, she's immortal. I wouldn't be surprised if my sword went through her and... and she didn't bleed at all. Honestly, with her, nothing would surprise me. Your people keep mentioning the wings of the Ten. What exactly does it mean? The visions tell us that the Ten flew on great metal machines with wings. Planes? And leapt into battle from the sky. For us, to imitate this feat is the ultimate expression of martial prowess. It is why the challengers leap into the arena during the cool route. And now, you have done it. <laughs> like the deeds of the Ten themselves, it will never be forgotten. So, tell me, how did it feel? I won't lie, pretty good. I can only imagine. One of these days, I'll take you with me. I have to go. But I'll be briefing everyone on the plan soon. Understood. Where is Tilda? There you are. If Elizabeth Solbeck were still alive today... Oh. And... 
she was the one trying to save the world. Like, I just don't get the impression that Alva... Oh, because earlier Alva was saying, Oh, I'm kind of scared of Tilda. I don't think she would give off scary vibes. Yeah, because we know that she's really compassionate about this cause. Stay as long as you like. I don't mind the company. Whereas Tilda... Seems to have an Elizabeth obsession. And is trying to chase it through Beta and me. Well done, Aloy. Despite my reservations, you managed to secure Silens and his weapon. You're truly a shining example of Liz's fortitude. I've been thinking about what you said at your house. How you were friends with Elizabeth. It was more than that, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Perceptive as ever. You're right, we were together for a time. Okay, so... What happened? I was an orphan. I had always been alone. By my 30s, I was starting to wonder if that was simply my fate in life. And then I met Liz. We kept running into each other at conferences. We'd have coffee. At some point, it became drinks. I thought it was just shop talk, an exchange of ideas, but... Then I was surprised at how much I looked forward to seeing her. Soon we were flying halfway across the world every other week just to meet up. For the first time, I didn't feel lonely. I could imagine a future where I wasn't. I think Liz felt the same way at first. She had lost her mother a few years back. I filled a void for her. I know I did. But as time passed, it seemed as though she wanted less when I wanted more. And so we ended things. So helping me, restoring Elizabeth's dream, it's what? A, a second chance, yes. At what? I made a mistake leaving Earth while Liz stayed behind. I should have done more. So when I saw you... A woman who has carved her own remarkable path beyond even what made Liz a phenomenon. I knew I had to help you. To do right by her. If you think about how it's been like a thousand years and she's still thinking about Elizabeth, it's actually pretty obsessive. Yeah, back when we were having quote-unquote breakfast, when she was talking about how she calculated how to get close to her, I was like, whoa, this kind of sounds like some pickup artist's plan. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, sure. Why did you make the data channel look like your house? I built that house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place, not just for me, but for the art stored in its depths. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but we've I'll heard this before sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. Yeah, we heard this exact conversation before at the breakfast. It's, uh, I feel like it's a bit of an interesting background. Someone who is very good, technically, being a super hacker and all that, so science-minded. But she's also very passionate about stuff like the arts. Balancing the technical with um, the artsy stuff. But yet, she seems so cold. Why do you think Elizabeth pulled away? I've wondered that for a thousand years. She was brilliant. Visionary. She cared so deeply for the world for the betterment of humanity. But it also felt like she kept everyone at arm's length, including me. She never wanted to share her burdens. I think, in the end, she had a core that she never let anyone be part of. Sometimes I wonder if anyone really knew her. It's lonely. I found a recording of you and Elizabeth back in the Proving Lab after Farzinet's attempt to steal Gaia. 
Yes. A most unpleasant conversation. She said something after the call. I think she regretted how things ended between you. Did what did she? she say? All this time, thank you for telling me. I've always hated that those were the last words we ever said to each other. And that her last impression of me was as a functionary of Far Zenith, not who I truly am. <laughs> you don't have to keep telling me again and again, hey, I'm not like that, okay? I'm actually a good person. Good people don't have to keep telling people, hey, I'm good, hey, I'm good. You said before that you're not like the other Zeniths, that you never were. But you went along with all of their plans. Out of necessity. I'm not proud of it. But complicity became a means of survival, both when Earth was consumed and when the colony on Sirius was destroyed. I did what I had to. But I resolved to remain one step ahead of the others to try to undo what damage I could. Hence the data channel with Beta. The secret passage into their base and the little trick I pulled to save you. Oh, thank you, Lord Zenith. Thank you for saving my life. When it's time to break into the Zenith base, what can we expect? I'll go over the full layout once you've assembled your friends. Suffice it to say, we will need to push as fast as possible to Beta in Gaia's location, dealing with heavy resistance along the way. There are also printing facilities where the others have been amassing the natural resources they've stripped from the region. What for? First for use in the base's infrastructure, and then to fabricate more Spectre drones, a small army of them. When I was out in the wilds, I saw a shuttle take off from the island, heading for space. It I was did? likely ferrying materials to and from our ship in orbit. After hundreds of years luxuriating in our digital comforts, the ship was barely space-worthy when we made our escape. Disaster can strike at any moment we've learned our lesson. Have you figured out how Silence's weapon works? No, and he's been very careful not to allow me near it. I'll admit it bothers me, but regardless of how it functions, I am confident it will deactivate the other shields en masse. How many of them are in base? Ten, including Eric and Gerard. Only a handful of us made it to our ship when our colony collapsed. Oh. So even... In the ship in orbit, there was only a few people. Oh, Stanley Chen. So, Eric. Was he always a bloodthirsty psychopath? I believe he got worse over time. On Earth, he was the founder of a profitable private military company. Imperator? A band of cutthroats, in other words. Even as governments abandon human combatants in favor of automated warfare. He found success with clientele that required a more personal touch. There were also rumors that he personally hunted and killed his targets. On occasion, all for the thrill of it. But on Sirius, he retreated to virtual reality simulations. In them, he could go on rampages as violent as he pleased, though I suspect with diminishing satisfaction. All of us tribe believes he was one of the greatest people from the old world. Then they would be quite disappointed to meet him, though I'm sure he'd bask in the adoration. Sounds like on Sirius, everyone just put on their headsets and called it a day for a thousand years. Who even knows what that kind of thing does to a person? What can you tell me about Gerard? He was the head of the world's largest financial conglomerate, and as such had dealings with almost every major corporation. It made him one of the wealthiest people on Earth, and certainly the wealthiest among Far Zenith. What does one person do with that much money? Buy more, more power, more influence. Gerard's always believed himself to be a refined patrician, able to maintain control with a polished smile. But beneath that exterior is a cold and calculating operator. It was his decision 
to restrict Beta's upbringing to her digital educators, the avatars of the Apollo database, while we were painted as her benefactors. Well, we'll deal with him soon enough, and the others. I would very much like to see his face when he realizes we've beaten him. Somebody like that has never lost in their whole life, even back during his time on Earth. When I was in the ruins of Vegas, I found data on a man named Stanley Chen. I think he was a zenith. Stanley, ever the optimist. He was one of the good ones. When we established our colony, he built an exact replica of Las Vegas in virtual reality. Lights, shows, gambling, every detail perfectly recreated. And while others cloistered themselves in their own fantasies, he flung his doors wide to everyone. The way you're talking about him, I'm guessing he didn't make it back to Earth? No, he perished when our colony was destroyed. He would have been thrilled to discover that part of his beloved city survived. He would have been. When Beta escaped and hid in an ancient research facility, I saw another one of the Zeniths, for Bena. Who was she? A dull star amidst a sea of brighter constellations. Unlike most of Far Zenith's members who amassed their wealth through shrewd business deals and technological achievements, Verbena inherited her billions. Her father had achieved great success in the luxury holotourism industry. At age 24, she became the world's most eligible bachelorette, branding herself a life designer, someone who leverages their fame to influence the choice of others. What, like a cult? In a way, yes. Well, she must have done something right to have survived this long. She was her own brand of ruthless. That much is true. But even rats can cling to a vessel for escape. Hmm. Doesn't sound like she had any real skills then. Okay, so I've had run-ins with a handful of Zeniths. What about the rest? An array of the wealthiest people on Earth. Titans of their industries. And let me guess. All selfish and ruthless to the core? Most, but not all. There were a few with whom I got along. Annika Merjani, for instance, was always delightful. She founded the Holonet's most successful dance channel and was herself mesmerizing to watch. <coughs> and I had fascinating discussions with Song Jiao about her work in cellular biology. Our immortality treatments are due in part to her achievements. But then there were others like Devin Miller, the CEO of a fast food printing corporation. His only real preoccupations were perfecting his golf swing and taking self hollows. When I think about all of us, we really should have accomplished more. We had eternity. That's exactly why you didn't do anything. There's no concept of time. Okay. I'll let you know when it's time. I'll be here until then. And thank you, Aloy, for giving me this chance. My past has always been a struggle. More than once, I've lost everything. But when I look to the future, I see Liz's dream fulfilled. A universe of new possibilities. Maybe we can make it happen. We will. I won't let anything get in the way. I promise you that. Tilda cares about the Liz's dream part. She doesn't care about the new universe part. She brought... Wait, is that- was that the fake one? The forgery? No, she's standing up. Woman reading a letter. Oh, this is the real one then, right? Not the fake one? I trust everything is alright. Yes, it is. Just be quiet. Oh, I wanna see- What did Liz say at the end of that- The audio point? I gotta find the right one. I remember hearing it back when we were there. I just don't know for being at the base. I just don't know what she said at the end. Here we go. The deal's off, Tilda. Zero Dawn got its ectogenic chambers. Far Zenith needs the Apollo database. There's no reason this incident- You tried to steal Gaia. I had nothing to do with it. And you punished those responsible. 
Your logic bomb has them scrambling to restore vital systems. I'm really supposed to believe that you knew nothing about this? Please, Liz. Humanity's chances are slim as is. You may not approve of our plan, but what if we're the only ones to survive? Don't you want us to have Apollo to remember our common past, our mistakes? I'm begging you. Fine. You'll get your copy of Apollo. Thank you. Let's speak again before- Goodbye, Tilda. Enough now. Time to let go. Did she say the enough now while in the conversation with Tilda or just to herself? Time to let go. Hmm, sounds like she's still potentially could have had feelings for Tilda. Elizabeth, quite a withdrawn person, so it's really hard for us to see how she really felt about things. No, this was the one room with nothing in it. Beta's room. This oh. place smells wrong. No sand or wind, only cold steel. And the others up there, your squad. They can hold their own. And as for this base, it may not be what you're used to, but it is a shelter. Call it what it is, a cage. You came here on your own. For the battle you promised. So for now I wait in my cage for your word. Tell me when to strike. Yeah, so quit complaining, please. God, that scared me. I didn't know she was in here. I didn't even know she was at the base. The whole time I've been in the West, I've been fighting you and your rebels. I'd at least like to know why. You were among the enemy. What more is there to know? Why did you do it? Dorok, Jiroka, Makalo, and the Karja pushed into the desert to raid our people. My brother's squad was among the first to intercept them. But the Karja captured them, strung them up, and burned them alive as an example. It was too late. I found them by the sound of their screams. So you wanted vengeance? Vengeance. No. I wanted devastation. To tear down the Karja's cities and drown the land in blood. Hunt down every last survivor and grind their bones until the sky chokes on the dust. But my chief betrayed me. Betrayed the Tanakh. How did Hikaro betray you? Hikaro called on the clans to resist the Karja's red raids. But we did more than just defend. We hunted them, and they fled as children before a pack of claw striders all the way to their border. There we ripped down their stone walls. Their domain was ours for the taking. But when it came time to push on, Hikaro ordered us to fall back. What soldier retreats when slaughter is at hand? The kind who wants peace for their people. Peace is just a lull between vendettas. But I thought my chief had greater tactics than mine, so I stood by him even when he allowed that filthy Karja to join our ranks. Fashav. I enjoyed watching him die at the embassy. He should have been put down when we first captured him on the field. Instead, he corralled made him a marshal. Fashav told me how he became a marshal. He earned it just like any Tanakh. It was an insult. No outlander can ever deserve to wear our armor, bear our marks. And then a Karja messenger was brought before us. That's when I knew 
I had to run my blade through Hakaru and drag his treacherous corpse to the gates of the sun. She has a very rigid idea of what Tanakh traditions are like. But if she really did, she would accept that Fashav became a martial fair and square. But in her mind, there is this unspoken rule. Number one, you must be a Tanakh. You must be of Tanakh origin, of Tanakh blood to begin with. Which is, you know, kind of like a racist thing. And Hikaru didn't hold that idea. What happened when the Karja messenger appeared before Hikaru? The quivering priest bore a message from their new king. No more war. No more raids. Suddenly, the Karja wanted to talk peace. An embassy at the very fortress we tore down. A true Danach would never take a Karja truce. Their blood exists to be spilled. But a Karo lapped up the priest's message. He showed himself a Karja loving traitor when he accepted. That's when I challenged him. And lost. His mercy was just another sign of his weakness. I vowed never to rest until the debt was repaid with him on his knees before me. So with an army of soldiers and machines at my back, I returned. The day you got in my way. So what's my mercy then? Is that also weakness? We're both physically stronger than you. The deal you made. Override tech in exchange for an assault on the Zenith base. How did Silence approach you? That name means nothing to me. My agreement was with the Asarama Sarah and her sons of Prometheus. So all this time, you didn't even know who you were really dealing with? And you trusted an outlander? If it was a trick, I would have crushed her. But she spoke with the same burning hatred for the Karja. And she offered me the chance to run them down with machines. The terror in your enemy's eyes when they see you charge. You know what I'm talking about. I bet you felt it. I don't think so. What about your end of the deal? Would you have honored it? Had I killed Akaro and become chief, these Zeniths would have been the first of the tribe's victories. But because of you, my people will continue to consort with the enemy. A tribe of weaklings. <laughs> Because of me, hundreds of Tanakh won't throw away their lives in a battle they can't win. <laughs> to her, running away from a battle is worse than losing in a battle. Losing your life. I don't know why... Why is she like this? Because the Karja killed her family? It's not even just about that. that. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the Karja. Are you really going to fight alongside me? I have no reason to betray you. Really? I failed to kill Hakaro, failed to eliminate you. No Tanakh would follow me now. Good. The Karja remain out of my reach, cowering behind their walls. All I have left are the screams of those long dead and unending rage. So show me where to bury it. Pitiful. All right. I guess we'll both face the end soon enough. Ever since you got in my way, I've wanted to see your bones burned white beneath the sun. But if I'm to die in battle, then it might as well be with the one who flew with the wings of the ten. I'll let you know when it's time to move out. She hates me, but I flew on the wings of the ten. Oh, I guess this door is unlocked now, with Gaia gone. Oh, was she the one keeping things locked? Oh, because Beta asked her to... Beta's things. We've been here before, haven't we? This is opened. Oh! To Aloy. Aloy. If you were listening to this, then, um, things didn't go as planned at Gemini. I know you'll keep your promise. 
Which means I must be dead. Oh. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? But a uh, lot's happened since you found me in that ectogenic chamber. Thank you, Aloy. You've been... my shelter. And I would risk it all again to be by your side. I know you'll find a way forward. That's what you do. I'm sorry, Beta. But I'm getting you back, no matter what it takes. From a narrative perspective, I'm really scared they'll do something to Beta. Because having Aloy and Beta around is tough to juggle, but uh, I really don't want her to leave. On the Regional Control Center. The more I read up on the Regional Control Center, the more I appreciate the immense amount of planning that went into Project Zero Dawn. But one aspect of this facility has me puzzled. Why pre-design it? Gaia was more than equipped to imagine the needs of future humans. While I have four working hypotheses, the answer may be the simplest. Sentimentality. Combing through the facility's files led to the discovery of an audio log, severely corrupted, likely a consequence of Minerva's occupation. I only managed to extract the fragment. August was only eight when the swarm broke out. He was in Singapore, staying with his mom. I should have gone. I should have done a lot of things differently. A log from the facility's designer, perhaps. I suspect it may have something to do with the locked door tucked away behind the maintenance shaft, but I am disinclined to pursue the matter further at this time. Aloy and Gaia want me to help build the transport rig and pulse generators for their trip to Gemini, so I must direct all of my attention to that. I hope it's not a pointless endeavor. It all depends on whether Aloy can procure Ted Farrow's Omega clearance, which frankly, feels like a long shot. Beta. The locked door. We need a six-digit code. August was only eight when the swarm broke out. I wonder if that's like a co like a um, hint towards the code. Needed six digits. Hmm. Man, there wasn't even a bed in here, guys. She was living in a freaking server room. Here we've been in. I've got to be more careful. Jensen almost caught onto my plan while we were going over the right, diagnostic right, right. This already. Specs. I've got nothing against the rest of the team. It, it's just... I'm sure they've all got family they're gonna meet up with in Elysium. But me? I couldn't even bury August. There is nothing of him left besides my memories. I won't let those blink out of existence, too. The vault's for us, no one else. Eleven more weeks before we lock the blueprints. Then the rest will be up to Gaia. I remember it's here. Well, if you just let me with the information we have, I would guess 888888. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, it's actually seven digits. Because August and then he was only eight. Thought it might have been that, but clearly not that simple. No, knowing the hints that Aloy gives me with the puzzles, they'll make it really explicit. It's not going to be as simple as a bunch of eights. <laughs> Don't worry. When the time comes, we'll find it, probably. Okay, Regala, you rest up or something, I guess. Was there anything else we wanted to look at around the base? We took both the energy cells. Yeah. Both of them have been fixed. Did we not pull this off already? It came back, somebody put it back on. And I just tore it apart again. Yeah. Okay. Well... Bulwark. Warhorn. 
To summon an army of rebels and machines. Regola threw everything she had at the Grove. Even in our duel, she was... ruthless. Still, I'd rather have her on my side for the fight ahead. Better on our side than on the other side, for sure. Where have I seen this before? Mm-hmm. Guess that's that then. Return the survey drones while Beta... Or, um, not Beta. Gaia's not here. Wait, are you gonna... Is it gonna start the quest here? Assemble your companions. Uh... It'll give me a warning, right? I just want to hand in the survey drone. That's all. Okay. Maybe it's time to get everyone together so Tilda can brief us. But is there anything I should handle before that? Okay, that's my point of no return. There we go. All drones are reconnected to the dome now. What do we get to show for it? Nothing. A wallpaper. That takes 20 seconds to load in. Well, it's nice and snowy, I guess. Oh. Wow. Immediately gone as soon as we leave. Be my guest. Okay, now we really gotta make sure we do everything first. To begin with, there is the Arrowhand quest. But, um, I did see a few things that you guys suggested I should go check out before we leave here. Can we hit some of those as well? And then I'll probably go deal with the question marks off screen. Unless if there's something insanely interesting. Is there something... Over... Here? Like around here? We can try and see. Hopefully not piss off that slaughter spine. I don't want to fight you. You know what? We'll fly over there. We don't have to go around like this. Overriding sunlings. Beta's gift. Now I can take to the skies. Beta's gift to me. This little island here? Oh, on the map it seems more connected. Oh, because because of these white islands. But actually, it's a little bit further away. This is a special island. It's all by itself. What is this place? Looks like a path. Wait, there's some markings on the... Someone painted those markings with great care. Well, somebody was here before. Candles. Wait, what did the markings say? I don't understand any of it. But the hexagonal... Yeah, the hexagonal shape immediately made me think of the subsystems. I think this is a memorial. Must be for a beloved friend. Someone left a note. I forgot to sit with Var when I went back earlier. I'll definitely remember when I go back later on. Here we remember our friend, with a view as calming as his voice, on stone as strong as his spirit. He was not just our rock, he was our oak, sturdy and stoic, whose presence brought us comfort, and whose branches touched us all. Rest in peace. It sounds like he's truly missed. Who is this a memorial for?
Oh, I just looked it up. Apparently it's one of Guerrilla Games' producers. That's a nice little tribute here. Rest in peace. Got a great spot here as well. Look at that view. 